We have been talking, of course, for many weeks now about Bill 21, the secularism law in Quebec. City councillors in Calgary have actually just voted unanimously to condemn that law. It bars civil servants in positions of authority from wearing religious symbols at work. Calgary councillors are also planning to ask the Canadian Coalition of Municipalities Against Racism to work on a nationwide initiative to oppose Bill 21. So why is the city speaking out against the law? Nahed Nenshi is the mayor of Calgary. He joins us now from that city. Hi, Mayor Nenshi. Nice to see you. Thanks for making time for us. Long time no talk. Thanks yes, for having me. Good to have you back. Federal leaders have all said, and we've talked to all of them, they're waiting for the challenges against Bill 21 to make their way through the courts before de deciding on any action themselves. Why did you take a different view? Well, I think uh, I'm not quite sure that's what I've heard from the federal leaders. Uh, what I've heard from the federal leaders is kind of a lot of mumbling apologia about dignity and human rights and then a pretty forceful thing that says, but we're not going to do anything about it. And uh, in fact, what we hear from most of them is not, we'll wait to see what happens. That is, to be fair, what Mr. Trudeau is saying. The others seem to be pretty clear. Mr. Shearer said, this is provincial rights. Provincial rights trump human rights. Uh, Mr. Singh has suggested that he, well, he thinks that, that talking about this would be said. divisive, yeah. right? And uh, so this is challenging for me in many ways because, frankly, there are a lot of things the federal government can do. The federal government actually has constitutional authority to disallow provincial laws. Don't use it very often, but they could. Uh, in the United States, when states were being recalcitrant on civil rights, federal government withheld federal highway funding. There are lots of options here. And frankly, we're in the midst of a federal election, and I see a real lack of courage amongst all the federal leaders that in really moving forward on this. Maybe they'll do something after the election. Mr. Trudeau has hinted he will. The others really have not. And for me, that is really challenging because we're talking about people's lives here. If it is a lack of courage, what do you think is behind that? Math. Were you just talking to Eric Gagné? Yes, I was. <laughs> the, the... It's, about, it's about math. And, you know, they know that this law is wildly popular in Quebec. They know there is no path to government without picking up seats or holding existing seats in Quebec. And so this is callous. It's about math. And I want to remind them that in the last election, there were a couple of proposals that were wildly popular around banning the niqab at citizenship ceremonies, around the barbaric cultural practices snitch line. All the polls were saying these were popular. The federal leader who most strongly opposed them, hey, he won the election. And so I think it's important for us to really put some pressure on our leaders to say this is not good enough. It's not good enough that we have this really barbaric law that says you have to choose between your job and your faith and math be darned, we got to do something about it. What about, and you touched on it, this idea that different people have put forward uh, that this is, you know, this is Quebec's jurisdiction. Quebec has the right to make its own laws. There are, there is a high level of support in that province for this. W what do you say to counter that? Justice has no jurisdiction. That's why my city council, and I was very proud of them, they're a very diverse group of people. We don't agree on a lot of stuff every day, but they unanimously uh, push this thing forward. And when we're talking about justice, when we're talking about fundamental human rights, that's not a jurisdictional question. You can't say, you know, one state has the absolute right to subjugate people. It's just not right. And, you know, let's be very, very, very clear. This is not about religious neutrality. It's not about secularism. It's not about the separation of church and state. Separation of church and state doesn't mean you can't have any faith in the public square. In fact, it means the opposite. It means no one religion can dominate over others. And people of every faith are welcome in the public square. And what we have here is a law that was specifically written to target three groups of people. Muslim women who wear the hijab, Sikhs who wear the turban, and Jewish men who wear skull caps or yarmulkes. That's it. This is deliberately discriminatory by design. And we have to stand up against that. Do you think if this had been introduced in a different province, the federal leaders would be reacting the same way? Depends on the math, right? You know, if God forbid it happened in Alberta, and it never would, but if it happened in Alberta, I can bet you that leaders who said, well, I don't need those seats, would probably be using this as an opportunity to take a real stand. And that's what bothers me here. I don't think any of the federal leaders think this law is just or right. And that's why I really would like to see them speak out on it, because it comes to the core of who we are as Canadians. 
the, the uh, retort from, and we've interviewed a number of people from Quebec's government about this, and, and you sort of spoke to it a little bit, but they really insist this isn't about discrimination, right? They say that you're also not allowed to wear a cross. Uh, they, they vehemently actually argue the position that this isn't about targeting certain groups. Why don't you believe them? Because it's not true. If I told you right now I'm wearing a cross, what would you say? You can put a cross under a shirt. You can't put a turban under a shirt. Mm -hmm. So laws that pretend to be neutral on their face but only have effect on certain numbers of people are not in any way laws that are neutral. You know, if I decided as mayor of Calgary to institute a citywide bacon ban, and I would argue, you know what? It, it affects everyone equally. Well, I'm a Muslim. I don't eat bacon. It doesn't affect me. It clearly is targeted at bacon eaters. And this is exactly what's going on here. By the way, I'm not instituting a citywide bacon <laughs> ban. I'm sure our viewers in Calgary are breathing a sigh of relief. Before I let you go, Mayor, let me ask you about a different subject because we're about to interview two mayors uh, from the GTA. Big subject here in Ontario right now is the possibility of a handgun ban, be it city by city or be it nationwide. What is your position on the prospect of a nationwide ban? We got to make sure our citizens are safe every day. And certainly in many of our big cities, we have a rash of gun crime. It's worse in some places than in other places. And I will never be closed minded to the idea of any policy that helps keep people safe. And I'm certainly happy to keep talking about that because ultimately keeping people safe is the number one priority of any public servant. Do you have a specific position on a nationwide ban? I mean, some, some of these mayors, for example, I'm just asking because they have come out saying the city by city ban isn't enough. We are really asking for a nationwide one. You know, guns don't respect city borders. You know, we don't have passport checks at borders. So if we're going to move in this direction, then nationwide policy makes tons more sense than a city by city policy. But ultimately, I trust my fellow mayors to make the right decisions they need to make in order to keep their city safe. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your time today, Mayor Nenshi. Nice to see Always you again. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Calgary Mayor Nahed Nenshi coming to us from Calgary. What I've heard from the federal leaders is kind of a lot of mumbling apologia about dignity and human rights and then a pretty forceful thing that says, but we're not going to do anything about it. They know there is no path to government without picking up seats or holding existing seats in Quebec. And so this is callous. It's about math. And when we're talking about justice, when we're talking about fundamental human rights, that's not a jurisdictional question. You can't say, you know, one state has the absolute right to subjugate people. And what we have here is a law that was specifically written to target three groups of people. Muslim women who wear the hijab, Sikhs who wear the turban, and Jewish men who wear skull caps or yarmulkes. That's it. This is deliberately discriminatory by design, and we have to stand up against that. Calgary's City Council voted unanimously Monday to formally oppose Quebec's Bill 21, the Secularism Law. Councils in Montreal, Victoria, BC, Kitchener and Brampton have also passed similar motions. Welcome back to Power and Politics. The Power Panel is here with Tiffany, Chuv, Francoise and David. Francoise, I'll start with you. What, what Mayor Nenshi said was that essentially the federal leaders are making a callous calculation for votes here. I think they are, in a sense, uh, because you cannot say on, on one hand, I had a good heated discussion I with know, David I prior. I wanted to save it. In the, no, no, but at, break, least, yeah. at least it's direct. It's, uh, here we have leaders who say we're against it, but at the same time, we don't do nothing about it. Uh, some of them justify it, which might be an easy excuse by the fact that they claim it's provincial. It's Quebec who adopted the, the, uh, the, the, the law itself. And that's all fine and dandy. But if that is being said and you truly believe it, then that's the end of the discussion. Let Quebecers deal with that uh, own drama inside their own uh, territory. Then you have Justin Trudeau saying which is as bad in my opinion, saying, I'm against it, I'm not sure I want to fight it. Uh, there's some, uh, he, he claims Quebecers are against it. There's a few people who are in courts uh, over it. And uh, we'll see, and I'm, I cannot say if it's going to be forever, but we know it won't be until the 21st of October. Of he says that, he's, wait, uh, he's waiting for the outcome of that federal, well, of, now um, he's rather, at, legal challenge now before he's making at, decision. Now he's adding uh, this, this, uh, this concept. Concept. Anyway, everybody knows my view on the topic. It's been <laughs> such a drama in the... Pro you have to live in Quebec. 
anybody who lived in Quebec lived through the PQ government and their value charter and lived all through the Commission uh, Bouchard-Taylor and finally found a, 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 the smallest denominator, common, common denominator, whatever, which is to say, not like Mayor Nenshi kept saying, it's not as if it's a ban throughout the province of Quebec. It's in very specific oriented thing with a notwithstanding clause, which means that in five years will be reviewable. Every Quebec has turned that page and we'll Quebecers see. have, no, I, and I take your point, and I think there's an acknowledgement of that in the positions of all the federal leadership, but at the same time, what we're seeing from mayors like Mayor Ninchy and other people in the rest of Canada is is sort of a, a, a very different reaction, right? And an almost uh, concentration of, the, of that type of reaction. And I'm wondering if that, you think, will have, will it up the pressure on leaders to take a more nuanced or a different position, or will it change anything, or does it matter what the rest of Canada thinks in this instance? Well, we are a nation of a rule of laws, and right now it is before the Quebec courts to decide whether or not the Quebec law actually will hold up to their standards, and then Quebec will have to decide if, if they want to uh, invoke the notwithstanding clause if there's an intervention. Um, you know, I know Mayor Nenshi. Uh, I'm from the city of Calgary. Uh, it's one of the most diverse places in the country. Uh, I'm pleased to know that a conservative government would never propose any type of legislation around this. It's that not it's, the same question. But, it, but it's important to talk about protecting religious freedoms. But the question is not whether any party would propose it at the federal level. It's what they're willing to do to fight the provincial aspect of it. Part of it requires waiting to see exactly what will happen in Quebec before you're able to intervene uh, at a federal level. You don't know how the courts are going to decide this, and you want to give that... Uh, the oxygen it deserves. The calculation, David, it appears so far for these leaders has been the outcome or the impact of how they position themselves on this in Quebec. Mm -hmm. Do you think the weight of that will change at all when you have people like Mayor Ninchy speaking out so forcefully? Yeah, I, I think they made their calculation based on the math in Quebec. I think he's completely right in his analysis of this. I mean, I wonder if this was a piece of legislation coming out of Queen's Park or the Jason Kenney government in he, Alberta, he made the would, exact the, same would, the, point, yeah. would the Liberals be so quiet on it? I mean, 25 Liberal MPs signed a letter condemning Doug Ford's use of the notwithstanding clause to reduce the number of seats on Toronto City Council. I've not yet seen the Quebec Liberal Caucus make any kind of a grand public gesture like that. It's, this is a very difficult piece of legislation for me. Is like, look, I'm a white Irish Catholic Newfoundlander <laughs> uh, who picks up my kids at a publicly funded school every day where their extended day program is largely executed by women wearing headscarves. And I am grateful for the care they give my kids. And I do not understand the the motivation to strip their ability to work in the public sector like that. I, I On an individual level, I can't grasp it. Uh, on a political level, I understand the math. I understand what they're doing. Uh, it, it, it's just a hard thing to sit back and look at and understand acceptable for the party of the charter. And especially when you look at last time what happened with the, the barbaric cultural practice yeah. of snitch line and how loudly it was denounced. You don't have to intervene but I would argue that if this was being done in any other province other than Quebec, the level of denunciation would be much louder and much higher. It's interesting that you make that point, uh, uh, Tiffany, because Mayor Nenshi also made the point that in the last election, the, uh, niqab, the, the debate over the niqab, as well as the debate over the barbaric snitch line, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau ended up articulating in that election a very specific position, and it didn't end up hurting him on election day. So he was kind of making the point that though you may at this, at this stage assess the political calculation to be one thing, it, it, standing up for, you know, and truly forcefully standing up for what you think is right may not backfire on election day. What do you make of that? Uh, I think it's, I think this is, this is tough and it's been hard to watch our, our federal leaders uh, be so wishy-washy in, in, in their language and their actions over the course of this campaign, but I'm heartened to see municipal leaders uh, taking a stance and five municipalities across Canada is a big thing and it'll be even bigger if Nenshi is uh, able to uh, garner up more support. I understand he's sending their motion to every municipality in Canada and I hope that as many as possible take this and continue to talk about this and I understand these motions don't necessarily have a lot of teeth but they have a lot of understanding and help people uh, across Canada understand what's taking place here and I think that this discriminatory practice is, is one that, uh, that I, I will not stop fighting and I hope that many Canadians will continue to uh, to be on the side of, of uh, pushing to see this change. It's not just, though, Francoise, in Quebec, the general population that the majority of which support this bill. We've heard the premier of that province come out explicitly and say, don't you dare, any of you, better not intervene. That in was his you first. Have, that was the first thing he said. How do you think that might factor? We've got some big debates coming up, two mm -hmm. of which are French, one tomorrow, tomorrow. night. How do you think this question factors into that? 
And the question of identity will be at the heart of the right. French uh, debate. So I'll Unique be to listening. That yeah. I'll be uh, listening uh, closely to their answer, which I suspect will be pretty much the same. Because uh, notwithstanding what I heard right now, again, notwithstanding, um, <laughs> is 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 the fact that yes, maybe Justin Trudeau learned well from 2015. Yes, maybe for, for you guys, the, his position was clear, but I was campaigning in Quebec in 2015. I had a leader, Tom Mulcair, who was supposed to be the government in waiting, Fair who point. took a very strong position on the issue. And we saw all of our support bleed overnight. So yes, Justin Trudeau had the position, but it went under the radar because it's Tom Mulcair who got the bulk of the whole uh, the whole hit from from that topic. So these leaders are no stupid. So they're opportunistic. We we can all agree with that. But they know that they will not go head on on the issue. And I I doubt very much that I will hear Justin Trudeau reiterate in 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 words that were a bit clearer today the fact that it sounds like he's going to contest. He's waiting for certain things and he will contest. Not during the campaign though. I don't think I'll hear this during the French debate in Quebec at all because he knows. Right. That what's going on in Ontario versus Quebec, uh, he cannot uh, lose more than we're expecting him to lose in Quebec. Quick final word to each of you, Shiv. It's a cynical play when you think about um, the actual question of culture at play here. I mean, we're talking about a country's laws, a federalism that works. And um, being able to respond to provincial aspirations and the way that our country works requires giving the rule of law some space in this place. As offensive as you might find it, I might find it, you know, we all know and have met Canadian Sikhs, Jews, Muslims who have fought for the country, died for the country. Uh, and so it's a, it's a profoundly important national conversation to be having. Uh, but I understand why the positions of some parties is to give the rule of law some space in Quebec to play itself Quick out. Quick final word, David. And a purely crass political uh, analysis of it, I wonder if Jagmeet Singh missed an opportunity here. I understand he wants to hold on to seats in Quebec, but uh, the polls would suggest that that may be a fool's errand right now. Uh, but to define himself as a defendian, f the champion of defending religious rights, I mean, he is asking Quebec voters to make him prime minister when he couldn't get a job in the public sector right now in the front line. It's a very difficult spot for him. and he Certain job, David. He could, Not so. all Positions of authority job. in the public well, sector. Just a, a policeman sure. or a teacher. That's well, it. All positions of authority. Okay, thank you, everyone. Appreciate the heated discussion. Thanks to the power panel this evening. Tiffany Gooch, Francoise Boivin, Chivaloy Majumdar, and David Cochran. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.